Hi everybody, welcome to our Pilates Foundation, Pilates for Absolute Beginners. There's a lot of detail in Pilates, but what I'll say is relax into it. Instead of focusing on maybe the words that we're not familiar with yet, focus on how it feels, let that sink in. Pilates is a mind-body connection and it can take a number of classes for that connection to develop. Everyone will be a little bit different, but there is a quote in Pilates that states it takes roughly eight classes for all of the principles to tie in for our mind-body connections to build in that way. So, when you're ready, we want to be able to find neutral and work from a state of neutral. Let's go over our setup. So, we have hip width the size of two fists between our feet. That's our own hip distance relative to our own bone size within our bodies. This means our second toe will trace through the middle of our kneecap and into our hips for the tracking of our knees. Our hips go into a different position if our toes turn out to the side or turn in. So the ball and socket joint will position itself differently. So as our home position for this setup, hip width the size of two fists between your feet and your knees. And then we've roughly our shoe size from heels to glutes. So just a little bit bigger than your foot. This will help us to set up our pelvis. If the feet are too far away, our back may overarch when we're doing the exercises. So here's our setup. Your own shoe size, heels to glutes. From there, you roll your back down onto the mat. This is our Pilates compass shape, our Pilates diamond shape, thumbs together and index fingers together. Your thumbs go onto your belly button and your fingers rest down onto your pubic bone. So we have a diamond shape underneath our belly button and you'll feel the heels of your hands on the wings of your pelvis. If we were to roll our lower back into the mat, our fingertips would be higher than our thumbs. If we were to do the opposite of that and arch the back, our thumbs are now higher than our fingers. If you find the center where your fingers and your thumbs can level off with each other and the heels of the hands, we have a neutral pelvis position. It's nice to think about the position of the bones in this diamond shape because we're all different shapes and sizes. So somebody may look like there's a big arch in the back because the glutes are a bit bigger, but maybe this diamond shape is neutral. Think about this diamond at the front of your pelvis and at the back of your pelvis. So as you roll your back into the mat, the diamond is shooting up towards the ceiling. And as you arch your back, now it's directing down into the floor. Another way to think about finding your neutral pelvis position, in the middle of that diamond shape, imagine there's a marble and you're going to roll the marble into your belly button. So we imprint the spine. The opposite of that, you're going to roll the marble out of your belly button and onto the floor. So we arch the spine. So marble into the belly button and then arch your back. Or this could be a bowl of water. So you spill the water into your belly button and then you spill the water onto the floor. Find the center of those two pelvic tilts where the water stops spilling, where the marble stops rolling and will be neutral. Again, if you're not sure, think about your bones. Tailbone is heavy. Wings of your pelvis are underneath the heels of your hands. Your fingertips line up with your thumbs. I'm just going to show you this from a kneeling position so that it sinks in. And you can do all of this along with me. You'll still feel the body organizing itself through the setup. So we have our Pilates diamond shape. You tuck your tailbone under and then you arch the back. So imagine we're lying on the floor here. I'm imprinting my spine onto the mat and then I'm arching the back, tucking the tail under and then <laughs> lifting the tail up. And then you find the center for neutral. So that diamond shape at the front of the pelvis and the back of the pelvis is parallel with the walls either side of you from this position. So there is this sense of ever so slightly tucking, but really what we're feeling is the engagement of the lower abs. And we're gonna get into the muscle work in a moment. But instead of being here and feeling like we're straight and throwing off the lines in our body, let's set up the pelvis. So imprint, arch, find the center. There's a very subtle curve in the lower back. So let's bring that down to our starting position again and you can take your time. Hip width, the size of two fists between your feet and your knees. Your shoe size roughly, heels to glutes. Roll your back down onto the mat. Let's check in with our pelvis position. Imprint and arch. 
imprint and arch, find the center for neutral. There's a very subtle curve in the lower back, but again, that's gonna vary depending on our body size and type, how thick our mat is, everything. <laughs> so we can check the bone position. Now we're gonna look at our rib cage placement. So make sure you feel the bones and they're underneath your hands. Very often in class, I see people go down here for the rib cage because you can feel the bottom ribs there, but come right up onto the rib cage. So we're cupping the rib cage. This is gonna help our brain to appreciate that the breathing happens in this 3D area and it's not just forward and back. So we don't just have the hands on the front. So get into the habit of cupping. We wrap the thumb around the back, fingers around the front. When we inhale, we're gonna think about opening the ribs out to the sides. So take a breath in through your nose out through your mouth and you bring the ribs back in. Think about breathing wide, inhale. And exhale. What we're looking for with the placement of the ribs is that we don't flare the ribs. That can be so easy to disconnect from and not realize we're in this flared rib position, but you want your lower ribs, the middle of your back to stay down. For some of us, that's going to be a big shift for our posture already and maybe we didn't even realize that these subtle adjustments are really helping us back to neutral and to gain some more length around the shoulders, the neck, our mid-back. So our tailbone is heavy with a neutral pelvis and the lower ribs are down with that subtle, natural, neutral curve in the lower back. Hands onto the rib cage. Inhale, open the ribs out to the sides without popping off the mat. So lower ribs stay connected. Think about breathing into the back and side of your ribs. So we'll do three of those breaths together. Take a breath in. Exhale, knit the ribs in and down. And again. Get your brain into the back of the body. Tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy. Again. So tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy. We're gonna bring our shoulders back. So let's bring our hands by the sides and slide your hands towards your feet. So let's do the opposite of that to really appreciate this movement and where it comes from. Shoulders up by the ears, and then you draw the shoulders down away from the ears. Instead of thinking about our neck and our shoulders, will you bring your brain into your armpit? <laughs> Imagine there's a little ping pong ball underneath each armpit and you're just trying to roll the ball down the sides of the body. Can you feel that recruitment here by our rib cage, by our armpits and the inside of our arms? So think about drawing your armpits down towards your front pockets. We need to check in again. Tailbone is heavy, neutral pelvis, Lower ribs are heavy. See how that adjusts the front of the neck in a very welcome way to bring some more length into the front of the neck. But when we're thinking about another part of the body, it's easy to let go of all those links. The beauty of Pilates is that we're gonna keep linking the body up. This will create a foundation and a habit and we'll continue to work from there. So tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy, shoulders back. So there's some length across your collarbones, but as you lengthen across the collarbones, we make sure this doesn't happen. Tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy, chest is open. Very gentle chin nod. So think about length in the back of the neck. Length across your chest. Intention of reaching down, bringing that attention from the armpits towards your pockets. As you breathe out to the side and in, lower ribs stay down and your pelvis is stable. The more that we practice the exercises, the easier this stability will become to maintain. We're not gonna have the stability perfect in every exercise, but at beginner level, the exercises are designed for us to be able to practice them and make mistakes and feel our pelvis and not kind of aggravate anywhere around the spine as we do so. So this is our supine setup and we will be doing exercises from here. We wanna go over this setup from every position available to the body. So this is called our supine setup or relying on our back. And there's loads of lovely ab work we can do from here, rotations, loads of strength and flexibility work we can do from here. Now let's have a look at our seated position. So if you wanna join me for a seated position and you can use your hands to come forward, we're gonna start off in a cross-legged position. 
If you cannot comfortably sit with a straight back in a cross-legged position, please grab a pillow or a yoga block and prop yourself up until it's comfortable for you to find your back in a straight line. So we don't wanna be rounding. So do prop yourself up if you need to. When our ankles are crossed, there's a slight difference from one hip to the other. So it's important to swap that cross every now and again. And that can feel really funny if you're not used to that, but that's giving our brain the message that there is some symmetry here that needs to be coded back into the body. So just think about that when you cross your ankles, every now and again, you swap the cross. For today, just swap with whatever one comes instinctually and we'll comfortably build up from here. As you're seated, imagine your pelvis is really heavy. It's like you're sitting down into cement and you're stuck into cement. So now that we've set up our bone position, we're gonna have a look at the muscle work. So our pelvic floor, you hear that thrown around in Pilates and in lots of other exercises these days, you hear it thrown around all the time. Let's just see how it feels for today. So if I was to use the front of my pelvic floor, it would feel as if I'm holding in just a drop of pee, very gentle. If I wanna access the back of my pelvic floor, it's as if I'm holding in wind. Can you feel those muscles lift? Very often in class, when an instructor will say, lift your pelvic floor, people lift their bum off the floor. It's so common. Keep your tailbone down. You've set your bones now, tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy, shoulders back, chest is open, gentle chin nod. We have that connection with the lower ribs to the mat. So you keep that position. And when we say lift the pelvic floor, it means finding the front and the back of the pelvic floor, holding in wind, holding in pee. Visualize a diamond shape from the front of the pelvic floor to the back of the pelvic floor. So like a floor at that area between our legs. When you lift the pelvic floor, we feel this recruitment from the back and the front and then let it go. If you squeeze the pelvic floor, you're gonna notice that it will shift your pelvis position and we're gonna over-engage our hip flexors. So it's gonna fire into these global moving muscles, these fast twitching fibers, instead of being nice and gentle, deep in the body and working in a slow twitch fashion. So we want to keep that really subtle and really gentle. Learning how to use the pelvic floor properly is the difference between toning the lower abs having a relaxed and toned pelvic floor or exercising and annoying the front of your legs all the time. So maybe you've done a lot of ab work and you just feel it burn your hip flexors and you need to take loads of breaks and we never access the lower part of our abs. Maybe that's because we're not using our pelvic floor and we're just firing with our quads being really dominant, the hip flexors kicking in, not using our glutes properly. So we're gonna look at all of that, starting here with this feeling of holding in pee and holding in wind. So this lovely wrap, this lovely lift of the pelvic floor. And again, it's subtle now. We just wanna find it for now, but it's such a gift as it translates into our beginner, intermediate and advanced Pilates. And it's really gonna change our connections through the body and our mindfulness through movement. So our pelvic floor helps to lift and helps us to access into the deepest layer of our abdominal muscles, our transversus abdominis, which wraps around the body like a corset and it's deeper to that bubbly layer of our abs that we're familiar with. So we lift the pelvic floor and then you're gonna scoop your belly as if an ice cream scoop is coming along, scoop it out. Instead of squeezing, instead of pulling the belly button down, more subtle than that because we're starting to understand that we wanna work slow twitch, we don't wanna squeeze. That's a different exercise. So gentle with the pelvic floor, we scoop the lower abs, the middle up along the middle of your back and in behind your rib cage. And as you do this, you want the awareness of tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy, shoulders back in a gentle chin knot. So we inhale to prepare. Exhale, gentle lift of the pelvic floor, front and back. Scoop your belly. Now knit your ribs in and down. So the ribs knit down towards the hip bones. And we think about the hip bones lining up with the lower ribs. If we flare the ribs, they don't line up. And if we're imprinting, they don't line up anymore. So think about this for your setup. The bones are lining up, hips, ribs, scooping through the core. 
So the muscle work here is gentle, pelvic floor, abs and ribs. We're not holding and squeezing and crunching. We want to be able to inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. We want to be able to move while being stable. So we're not squeezing and blocking and gripping. We're open and we're continually accessing through these patterns that we're going to build up and that's going to tone us. It's really efficient. We'll get a lot more toning for a lot less reps. And so it's win-win. So this position, we've set up our bones, we've accessed our muscles. Let's just look one layer deeper before we swap our position. Hands are reaching towards your feet, shoulders back, lower ribs down. As you lift your pelvic floor, abs scoop up along your back and you knit your ribs in and down. Just have the feeling of the armpits drawing down. So in your brain, think about lifting up from the pelvic floor, down from the armpits and into the ribs. So everything meets in the center. Martial arts people will call this the powerhouse. So it's referred to as the core a lot as well. Centering is one of your Pilates principles. So here we are. Focus and precision are two more principles. So here we are. Relaxation is a principle. So here we are. And we'll get into our flow and our concentration and control with the exercises. So we're going to take all of this information to a seated position. You can use your hands to come up or you can come to seated with me. When you're ready, we're in this seated position and we're going to anchor our hips to the ground, have this feeling of grounding yourself. Imagine you're stuck in cement, so you feel really nice and solid with the lower body. Get your brain into your pelvic floor from here. Front of the pelvic floor, very gently holding in P. You just about access the muscles. We're not squeezing and changing our position. Back of the pelvic floor holding in wind. So you just feel those muscles get on board following your direction. Front and back of the pelvic floor holding in P, holding in wind. Scoop the belly and trace up along the back. You may be surprised to feel how much that adjusts your back. You might have thought you were really flat, really straight with the back. But here we are pulling ourselves into neutral because our rib cage is out of line with our hips when we're flaring the ribs. So as we scoop the belly and knit the ribs, it's going to bring us back into alignment or bring us into alignment for the first time. So your lower body is heavy. Front and back of the pelvic floor lift. Scoop your belly and trace up along your back. Now knit your ribs in and down. And once again, we can feel that nice line from the hip bones to the ribs. Ribs are flaring, it's out of line. We're curling the back, it's out of line. So we find the center. Relax your shoulders so you can draw the armpits down and we're going to bring the arms in front. Can you imagine someone's lifting you up by the ears so we get the sense of length? Or there's a string at the back of the crown of the head lifting you up so you lengthen through the neck with a very gentle chin knot. Lower body is stuck in cement, pelvic floor, abs, ribs. Lengthen, get a sense of length, use your mind-body connection through the lower back, mid-back, upper back, lengthen the neck and keep your shoulders down, so draw the armpits down. As you reach forward, your shoulder blades separate. The opposite of that, you draw your shoulder blades together. Think about your shoulder blades gliding and sliding across the rib cage. reach forward and then shoulder blades come together. Slide it forward. And now glide the shoulder blades together. Can you do this without the rib cage flaring? That's challenging, that's deep core work. Pelvic floor, abs, ribs, reach forwards. Now slide the shoulder blades together. See how different that feels. We're integrated, we're organizing. Reach forward and now glide the shoulder blades together, aware of your rib cage. You breathe out to the sides and then you connect to the center again. And then we find the middle of those two positions where we're not reaching too far forward, where the shoulders are separated. We're not squeezing the shoulder blades together. We're in the middle. Back of the neck is nice and long, gentle chin knot. There's a bone at the back of the ear that's tray. You can feel it protruding there and it traces across to the middle of our shoulder. So you have a neutral shoulder girdle, neutral pelvis, a neutral spine from this position with awareness through the muscle work. Now we're gonna bring all of this set up to all fours. So when you're ready, you can come onto all fours, spread your fingers nice and wide. 
The hands are underneath the shoulders. So that means the end of our collarbone traces through the middle of your wrist. So just make sure the hands aren't under the chest and too close together. That may work for a different exercise, but let's do our setup here. Spread your fingers out nice and wide, get a stretch through the hands. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. So like the start of the class, the size of two fists between your knees. So relative to your own bone size, we're setting up our hip position. If our knees are too close together, think about the ball and socket joint here. The head of the femur may just pop out a little bit and too far apart, we're causing this internal rotation or this internal sit into the hip. So have it where you have two fists between your knees. So we're nice and neutral. We've created this stable position for ourselves. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Remember we spoke about a triangle when we were lying on our back. So our triangle at the front and the back of the pelvis. So if your triangle is dipping, your bum is sticking up. If you're tucking your bum under, the triangle is no longer parallel with the ceiling. So we find that center. So from all fours, Check in with your pelvis position. Remember when we were lying on our back and we imprinted our spine. So think about that from all fours. It's the equivalent of tucking here and visualize that diamond shape. So now the top of the diamond is pointing up to the ceiling and the bottom is at a diagonal to the floor. The opposite of that, now the bottom of the triangle is pointing up to the ceiling and the top is directing down into our back. So you find the center where that triangle is parallel with the ceiling. Think about the front of the pelvis as well. Pubic bone down, pubic bone up, and then you find the center for neutral. It's as if there's a cup of tea on your back and you don't want to spill it. We check in with the rib cage. So if you scoop the belly and knit the ribs together, it will help you to support the mid spine. And remember, we're breathing out to the sides and back in so we can maintain this spine position. Check your shoulder blades like we did when we were seated, sliding the shoulder blades together and apart, sliding together and apart. And then you find the center where your shoulders are not squeezing together, you're not rounding too much, they're nice and flat against your rib cage. You soften the elbows ever so slightly just in case some of us hyperextend, just in case we're turning the elbows out too much. The inside crease of your elbow traces across to the opposite corner of the mat. So we can draw this X with our imagination into the elbows and keep it nice and soft. So we're switching on, we're using our deep muscles again and you can feel the armpits draw down the sides of the body. We wanna make sure that we're not hanging the head and we're not looking up. That might be useful in another exercise, but let's find neutral. So we're in the center. There's energy reaching forward through the crown of the head and you lengthen the back of the neck and you're looking straight down. There's energy reaching back through the tailbone and we need some awareness in the core here so that we're linked in with our bone position, our mind-body connection. Press gently into the front of the feet as if you're about to lift the knees but don't lift the knees. So think maybe just 20% of your strength. And it's going to help you to feel the muscles, to feel the inside of the body. Bring your attention in. Centering is a Pilates principle. Get your brain into the front and the back of the pelvic floor. Holding in wind, holding in pee, so you can zip up that pelvic floor. Scoop the belly up along the back and knit the ribs together. So here's our bone setup and our muscle setup from all fours. Let's come down onto the belly for our prone section or back extensions. And let's look at the setup. When you're brand new to Pilates, it can take a while for this to make sense. The more that we can build our awareness in all the positions, the more we're gonna balance the body. And that balance is gonna translate into everyday movements. So awareness as to where our body is in space, how to load through the body and how to access those deep fibers is really, really gonna to stand to us for years and years and years through everyday movements. It's the foundation of your movement for so many different exercise disciplines and prevent injury. Running, swimming, rugby, cycling, golf, whatever your sport is. So here we are in our prone position. Your feet are hip width apart, so not too wide. Our glutes really are taking over when it comes to the external hip. So we keep bringing our brain into the inner thighs. The inner thighs are part of our core. So our core is not just our abs, inner thighs, bum, pelvic floor, 
four layers to the abs, the deep back extensors, and our serratus anterior, this muscle in our armpit that draws down. So we've hip width between the feet. <laughs> Relax your shoulders. Here, our shoulder blades are winging. So we drop those elbows down to flatten our shoulder blades against the rib cage. We're gonna tuck our tailbone and push into the front of the legs. Make sure the feet don't go wider there, so hip width apart. So we want this awareness into the front of the legs, pressing down, helping us to tuck our tailbone under and press the pubic bone closer to the ground. From here, you can feel how that draws you closer to the mat. And we're really aware to these subtle adjustments through the body and we welcome them in because all of this slow twitch work, all of this postural work is really going to build up. We haven't done any of the exercises yet, but even this setup, you'll feel a little bit of burn in your abs tomorrow and the next day because those slow twitch fibers are firing and pulsing and they'll take that extra day or two to pulse and kick in and we feel the toning from that. So tucking your tailbone, pressing into the front of the legs, get your brain into the front and the back of your pelvic floor, holding in pee, holding in wind, but very gently, you just lift it. Scoop your belly. It's as if there's a thumbtack underneath your belly button and you're trying your best to get away from it. And knit your ribs, that pulls you closer to the ground. Shoulders down away from the ears. Your head is hovering above the mat. The back of the neck is nice and long so there's no wrinkle or pinched skin. There's energy reaching forward through the crown of the head and back through the tailbone and you press into the front of the legs. It looks like we're just lying here but this is probably our most challenging connection through the body yet and the most integrated as well that we can feel. The whole body is working here. Tuck your tailbone, press into the legs. As you tuck the tailbone and use the front of the legs, it helps you to make the upper body feel a little bit lighter. When we let that go, you can really feel the weight of the head. When you draw it back in, you can feel the whole body working and the lower part of your core kicking in more. So get your brain into the center of the body, pelvic floor, abs, ribs. And that's our setup from this prone position. So we have side lying to look at next. We're gonna bend the knees at a 90 degree angle from the hips and lie down flat. So your arm can reach out straight or you can cradle your head if you prefer. If the knee is sliding back, our hips are not stacked. So we want our knees on top of each other, ankles on top of each other. And you'll be able to test that with the exercises because if you keep coming in short of that stacking, we'll know that our hips are out of the alignment that we want here. So hips are stacked, knees are together. We allow a little mouse hole space underneath the lower side of the body. So instead of cramming down, hiking a hip, cramming down, kind of picture that curve that it would put into your back. We get rid of that. So we stack our hips, there's a mouse hole space, and we think about that neutral line through the center of the body. It helps if you draw the armpit down and lengthen the back of the neck. So we are switched on here. There is a level of engagement even though we're lying down on our side. Get your brain very gentle and subtly into the front and the back of the pelvic floor, holding in pee, holding in wind. Scoop your belly to trace up along your back and knit your ribs. That helps to bring you forward ever so slightly and stack the shoulders and the hand can help you here. So that's our setup for sideline. So let's go back to the start of the class and try out a couple of exercises. The more we can revisit this, the better. We keep going over our setup until that becomes our habit. So hip width, the size of two fists between your feet and your knees, your shoe size roughly, heels to glutes, and you can roll your back down onto the mat. Check in with your pelvis position, imprint, arch, imprint, arch. Find the center for neutral. Tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy arms by the sides, slide your hands towards the end of the room, drawing the armpits down the sides of the body, shoulders are back to lengthen across the collarbones without flaring the rib cage and popping the lower ribs off the mat. So again, it looks like we're just lying here in this supine position, but we're very integrated from our toes up through the legs, up along the spine to the tip of our head, down through the arms. The whole body is connected here and organizing. Center yourself. Precision, centering, focus, three of our Pilates principles. Draw them in here to the setup. Take a breath into the side of your ribs. With your exhale, pelvic floor, abs and ribs. Breathe in. And out. 
As you breathe into the side of the ribs, we make sure you have that connection. So get your brain into the back of the body, tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy. Breathe in and out, pelvic floor, abs and ribs. So we're gonna come into what's called tabletop position in Pilates. So we take a breath in. With the exhale, you switch on the center and we stabilize pelvic floor, abs, ribs. We maintain that stability, reinforce with the exhale and lift one of your knees into tabletop. It's a 90 degree angle behind the knee and your knee is above your hip. So we're not here. We're also not here or here. We have that 90 degree angle as if your heel is just resting on a table and just lower that down. You want to perform these movements with absolutely no movement through the upper body, tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy, shoulders back. Make sure you have that length through the front of the neck and a gentle chin nod. Take a breath in, exhale, switch on the core, pelvic floor, abs, ribs. This engagement happens half a second before you start to move. So we're already engaged and exhale to lower it down. Now we're gonna bring one leg at a time into tabletop. Take a breath in, exhale, switch on, pelvic floor, abs or ribs, lift your first knee into tabletop, keep it there. Take a breath in, exhale, use your core <sighs> stability, lift the second leg, knees and ankles together to create this feedback through the inner thighs, part of our core, our pelvic floor, our glutes, four layers through our abs, our deep back extensors, our armpits, and we're all connected here. The weight of the legs is working, our stabilizers, our slow twitch fibers. Now just separate the hip width apart, take a breath in. With your exhale, lower one foot down onto the mat. Maintaining neutral, breathe in. Breathe out second leg. Let's do that again, breathe in. Breathe out, lift a leg into tabletop. Breathe in, exhale, lift the second leg. Knees and ankles together. Give a little feedback into the knees, into the ankles, creating that midline focus. Now release it again, take a breath in. Exhale, switch on your core, lower your first foot down. Take a breath in. With your exhale, use your core, lower the second leg. Now we're gonna go over ab prep in Pilates. So we're gonna float the hands and stretch across the room so the armpits draw down the sides of the body. Take a breath in, become aware of the lower ribs and how heavy they are against the mat. Become extra aware of that neutral curve, tailbone heavy. And with your exhale, zip up through the center, pelvic floor, abs, ribs. Ribs draw in and down, helping you to lift the head, neck and shoulders. See my pelvis, I'm not here. We have space through the front and the back, that diamond shape on the front and the back. So parallel with the flat ceiling above you. Lower ribs are heavy. You're connected through the core, ribs towards the hips. So it's all in the core here and your neck is relaxed. That's really important. Anytime you're not sure about anything, hips, neck, anywhere that hurts lower back, you come out of it, check your setup and go again. It will start to sink in. That alignment will start to build up. So just lower that down, let's try it again. Float your hands, draw the armpits down, tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy. So we're thinking about the back of the body, get the brain into the middle of the body now with the muscle work. Breathe in, exhale, pelvic floor, abs, ribs. You're already switched on. Reinforce it with an exhale as the head, neck and shoulders lift as one unit into ab prep. Your chin is on top of an imaginary peach. So there's a bit of space here, you're not cramming the chin in. Tailbone is heavy, put that focus there. Lower ribs are heavy, the abs are switched on. You can really feel them already. And lower down. So I'm gonna do two with the breath so you can see it. Set yourself, tailbone, lower ribs, armpits. And again, really the beauty of Pilates is how efficient it is and how gentle it is on our joints because we can do so few reps for such a high 
impact, such a big payoff in the body. So two reps there of ab prep, four reps if you're doing it with me through the setup. And we really feel the abs. You're gonna feel them tomorrow if you are new to Pilates, if this is your first class. If you're going over your foundation, I know maybe there's a bit more strength there. But brand new to Pilates, just the setup, you're gonna feel it tomorrow. So let's do one more exercise from this position. We're gonna keep the shoulders down this time. Tailbone heavy, lower ribs heavy. There's that adjustment. The shoulders wanna curl forward if there's some tightness in the pecs. So we're just gonna encourage them back, lengthening across the collarbones, maintaining that mid-back connection to the mat. Gentle chin nods with some length through the back of the neck. Take a breath in. With your exhale, pelvic floor, abs, <laughs> ribs. Lift your left knee into tabletop. If you start an exercise with the left knee and we lower down, we reset, the next time you're gonna start it with the right knee. So start to think about firing on the opposite sides of the body. We'll go into that more as the classes go on. So take a breath in, exhale, switch on your core. Left knee to tabletop, breathe in, switch on your core. Right knee into tabletop, knees and ankles together. We draw our attention to the midline as if your knees are magnets and they keep drawing closer together. They're just drawn together. Pelvic floor abs, ribs. See that connection through the upper abs, helping us to stabilize the mid back. Keeping your pelvis completely still, lower ribs heavy, tailbone heavy. That drawing towards the midline with your knees, hands by the sides, armpits drawing down. Length across your collarbones, gentle chin nod. Scoop through the center to connect to the midline. You tap the right toes, keep the left leg still so we don't want the knee to come in or for the heel to fall. You keep that 90 degree angle, then you inhale to lift. Exhale for the second side and inhale to lift and the knees touch so we don't wanna be here. Keep it so that we're drawing towards the midline. Exhale, inhale exhale and inhale here it's very subtle core work so the front of the hips don't overwork anytime you need to relax out your hip flexors please do connect to the center connect to the bone setup get into the muscle work come back keep that muscle work reinforcing with the exhale inhale to the side of the ribs and see if that corrects it for you so we have the core working and not overworking the front of the hips so exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, scoop, totally present, totally connected to the movement, focus on the center, lower ribs are heavy, building that awareness, that mind-body connection, exhale, inhale, Exhale and inhale. Once more each side, tap the toes, then the knees touch, tap the toes, and then the knees touch. And now you can just hug your knees in and release your lower back. Rock your knees from side to side, let your head out from side to side. Take a deep breath in and out. We'll come back to our seated position with cross legs and just go over an exercise here. So we're gonna keep reinforcing our foundation, our setup and adding the exercises on top. So your hips are stable and steady as if they're stuck in cement, you've crossed the ankles. Maybe you swap your cross if you keep doing the same cross to balance out our hips. So we anchor ourselves down, we ground ourselves with the hips. Get your brain into the back and the front of your pelvic floor, holding in wind, holding in pee. Scoop the belly, knit the ribs. Reach the arms in front, check your shoulder blade position. Draw the armpits down. So we're feeding up, we're feeding down into the core. Get your brain into your pelvic floor abs ribs and reinforce with the exhale. Now open the arms out to the sides and feel that stretch across your chest, very connected to the center. So this doesn't happen. Scoop through the core, knit the ribs and reach apart. Take a breath in, relax your shoulders. With your exhale, head, neck and shoulders move together from the mid spine as you move to the right. So see the arms? We don't want this to happen. Keep your chest open, twist from the center. Keep your hips steady, inhale to the center. Exhale to the left. Feel that movement from the middle of your spine. 
and inhale. Exhale, anchor down with the hips, head, neck and shoulders move together and inhale. Get taller, lifting through the crown of the head. Exhale and inhale. Exhale and inhale. That inhale will help to draw you back. Exhale and inhale. And you can relax that out. So let's swap the cross of our feet just to see how it feels. And we're gonna go for an exercise called mermaid. So we'll do the setup. You're gonna reach your arms in two different directions, but we always have the awareness of setting up. Anchor the hips down, front and back of the pelvic floor, scoop the belly, knit the ribs, open the arms out. So the rib cage doesn't always follow the shoulder girdle. We stabilize and then we stretch our chest muscles. Palms are gonna face down for this to start with. Stretch apart in two different directions, like a Mr. Stretch doll. Through the fingers, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders. Draw the armpits down, connect to the center. With this sense of reaching, you're going to turn your left palm up to the ceiling and feel that rotation from the wrist into the elbow, into the shoulder. Exhale over to the right side, very little weight in the right hand. Our mind is going to keep following that left wrist over. Inhale to the center and relax the shoulders. Get this sense of stretching apart, swapping the palms, and exhale. Fingertips touch the ground, very little weight in the bottom hand. We reach up and over, feel it down the side of the body, through the ribs. Inhale to the center. We'll just do once more each side. Swap your palms, exhale. Reach through the side of the body, anchor the hips down. You're sitting in cement. Inhale nice and tall, melt your shoulders down, hit that long line, relax the shoulders, swap your palms, and exhale. And inhale to the center. The breathing pattern will make more sense with practice and all the shapes of the exercises, so relax that out. Tomorrow we'll be focusing on the exercises a little bit more and reinforcing the setup. So let's come to our all fours position. So you can meet me here on all fours and take your time if it suits your knees to move a bit more slowly. Hands under the shoulders, spread the fingers wide, knees under the hips, hip width apart, remember the size of two fists. Check your shoulder blade position, sliding together, sliding apart, finding the center. Check your neck position, there's length through the back of the neck, you're looking straight down. Check your pelvis position, find neutral, like there's a cup of tea on your back. Press into the front of the feet as if you're about to lift the knees. Feel the muscles, get on board. <laughs> Scoop your belly, knit your ribs. So get your brain through that midline. Front and back of the pelvic floor. Trace the front of the body up along the back of the body and knit your ribs. Take a breath in, relax your elbows. Exhale, you're gonna lengthen your right hand forward. <sighs> you exhale, scooping the center so our body doesn't shift and inhale to lower. Focus on the center, it's gonna stop you swaying. Exhale, switch on the center, left arm reaches forward, and inhale to lower. Notice how much our body braces for the weight of the arm. Exhale, switch on, right arm forward, shoot it out with energy. Inhale to lower, scoop through the core to protect your back. Exhale, left arm, and inhale to lower. Find your center and we'll do the same with the legs. Take a breath in, relax your elbows. Exhale, scoop the center, right leg back. We're not arching the back, so scoop the belly, knit the ribs, shoot the leg back. And inhale to lower down. Exhale, left leg back. The more you stretch backwards, the less weight you're gonna feel in your hands. So lift up into the core, reach back through the leg, reaching through your toes, your ankle, your knee and your hip and inhale. Once more each side, switch on the core, then you move from the core, right leg. And inhale to lower. Left leg, switch on the core. And inhale to lower. You can relax that out. Just coming down onto the elbows, take a deep breath into your back. Exhale fully. When you're ready, we're coming all the way down onto the belly. We'll go over our setup quickly and just add an exercise in 
So hip width between the feet or a little bit closer. Relax the shoulders, lengthen the neck so there's no pinched skin, you're looking straight down. Shooting energy forward through the crown of the head. Back through the tailbone, so feel that opposition, those long lines through the body. Relax the shoulders down and back, draw the armpits down. So just bring your attention in there, even if you don't feel it very extremely. We want that subtle adjustment, our mind-body connection. Tuck your tailbone, press into the front of the legs. Get your brain into the front of the pelvic floor, holding in P. Back of the pelvic floor, holding in wind. Scoop your belly and knit your ribs. Are you able to keep tucking the tailbone and try to lift your right leg and then lower. Keep tucking the tailbone, try to lift the left leg and then lower. So we don't want this to happen. See my pelvis, my belly, my ribs. We want this to happen. See my pelvis, my belly, my ribs. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Try the second side, lift and lower. One side's always easier than the other. Now let's try both legs. Just hover them, reach back so the knees are off the ground, but you're tucking your tailbone so the knees are trying to get back down. Reach through your toes as if someone's pulling the toes away from the ankles, ankles away from the knees, knees away from the hips. Scoop through the center so your brain is in the back of the body, through the center of the body, the front of the body, reaching through the ankles. As you lower the feet, you're going to just peel the upper body, but see my belly, we're not doing this. You're tucking the tailbone and just peeling. As you lower down, there's a tum tack underneath your belly button and you lift the legs like a seesaw. Lower the legs down, peel the upper body, but keep the ribs on the ground and keep that tum tack under the belly button. Lower down and the legs lift. We're gonna inhale for the upper body. Elbows on the ground, so check in. Exhale, lower as the legs lift. Just once more. Inhale. And exhale and relax it out very precise very focused very controlled very centered relax your body and flow with the breath as much as you can i know when it's all new that'll take some time to sink in curl your toes under your calves will be happy for that press back onto all fours your back will be happy for that that balance through all of these ranges and just relax it out so now we'll go for side lying again. So in our side lying position, we're gonna have the knees bent straight out from the hip at this 90 degree angle and your knees are stacked so we don't want the knee to fall backwards. You're lying down flat, you could cradle the head or reach the arm out straight, whatever you prefer. We draw down with the shoulders, the neck lengthens. Get your brain into the front and the back of the pelvic floor. Scoop your belly and knit your ribs. That helps to draw you in if there is a flare in the rib cage that we aren't really connected to at the moment. So scoop through the center. There's a mouse hole space underneath the lower side of the body. We're gonna bring our heels together and our toes apart to lift the top leg and then lower. So feel this external rotation from the hip, lift and lower. Now parallel, so the heel lifts and lowers, just warm up the hip. Lift and lower. Now we're gonna lift and kick the heel straight out. Draw the knee in and lower down. Inhale, exhale. How still is the rest of your body? Inhale and exhale. Press into the bottom leg, inhale. Exhale, push through the heel. Inhale, draw in with the knee and exhale, just once more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. We're gonna do the same on the second side. And you can take your time getting set up. Cradle your head or lie down flat. Relax your shoulders. There's a mouse hole space underneath the lower side of the body. Draw the shoulders down, lengthen the neck. Press into the bottom ankle, knee, hip. Heels together, toes apart as you lift the top knee and lower. We feel the external hip rotators shortening here and then we let it go. Inhale and exhale. And now we'll lift so the knees are parallel. Make sure you have that little mouse hole here connected through the center. Inhale and exhale. And you know that your hips are stacked if your knees come back on top of each other. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Not trying to go too high, just getting that control and that connection for today. The moves will get bigger as our classes progress.
So let's float to around hip height and now push through the heels to so see the way my toes are pulling up towards my knee. Then draw in with the knee, inhale, so you feel the front of the leg. Now feel the back of the leg push through the heel. Feel the front of the leg, draw in with the knee. That's our mind, body, our imagination a bit. Exhale to push and inhale to pull. Remember to connect the center. We'll finish on this one. Exhale and inhale and you can lower it down. So we've explored lying on our back, coming to seated, coming to all fours, onto our belly for extension and side lying. You'll notice that in Pilates you always balance these movements. There's always some form of rotation, side bending, flexion, extension, combinations of those of bone bearing into the wrists through things like plank and all fours and of course the side body as well. Thank you so much for joining this foundation class. Repeat it as many times as you like or continue on to the rest of the foundation classes into beginner, into intermediate, into advanced and check out the challenges, the 34 moves, the boot camp, the master, the move, wherever this Pilates road takes you. But this foundation is where it all starts. What you've put in today, no one can take away from you. I love that. So then the willpower to do it again, we just keep on layering and building on that. Thank you so much for choosing to do one of my classes. I'll see you again for another foundation class and the rest of your Pilates journey. Thanks everybody.